Hello everyone and welcome to Close Up on America's Business. I'm Michael Nader. This is the television news magazine that goes behind the scenes of the most successful businesses across America. We meet and talk with many of the most innovative business leaders in the country today and learn how new technologies are changing the world around us and in the ways in which we do business. You are about to see one of the most interesting and informative segments we've had the pleasure of presenting on this show. It spotlights a company that is one of the most outstanding in its field, a company that impressed us as being one of the very best. Ask any corporate executive about the importance of their logo, their corporate logo, and most will tell you it's very important, especially from a sales perspective. This, however, is the story of a logo that's more than just important, it is actually critical, especially to the companies on whose products this logo appears and to the millions of consumers all over the world who buy products simply because this logo is there. This is the familiar Circle K. It's the logo of the OK Kosher Certification Organization headquartered here in New York. If this is on a food product, it's the guarantee that that product has been certified as kosher. It's a symbol recognized in over 61 countries around the world. To learn more about the far-reaching impact of this organization, we sat down for a conversation with the CEO, Rabbi Don Yoel Levy. The purpose of this organization is to ensure to the public that they are getting kosher certified food. Define for me just what you do to make something kosher, to certify it kosher. The company receives an application, includes in it all the requirements that we need for the initial investigation of the company, obviously the name of the company, the location of the company, and the most important thing of course would be the ingredients the company uses, the new products that they produce. Some sources producing the this, this same ingredient might be kosher and some sources may not be kosher. And do you think it's important for the manufacturers of foods to be producing food certified kosher? The vast majority of the major food corporations all have made the decision to go kosher. You take uh, Kraft Foods, which is the largest food producing organization in the world, they've decided to go OK Kosher. ConAgra, which produces products like Hunt, Wesson, they have decided to become kosher. You have coffees like um, Maxwell House, one of the largest coffee companies, they decided to go kosher. So obviously the uh, kosher is a market driven product or a market, market driven, something which is market driven and the major organizations have decided that it's worth their while to go kosher. And talk to me a little bit about what all the people here at headquarters do. They're, you have a large staff. What's going on? Well I told you the people downstairs are working on data. The people on this floor are the rabbis. These are the, the experts who part of the time they travel and part of the time they sit in the office. We are also very unique in that are the only cautious organizations where the rabbinic coordinators just don't sit at a desk and manipulate papers and write back and forth. They themselves go out, visit the factories, then come back and organize what they have found. The OK's job as a supervisor of organization is to ensure that you meet your customers' requirements. If tomorrow you do not have customer requirements for kosher, then we leave. There's no reason for us to be here. We're only offering a service which is that you should meet your customers' requirements. Well, what we primarily do is certify food as kosher. The goal of our organization is to try to make this process easy. We have a tremendous amount of knowledge. We use the latest in technology and a tremendously devoted staff. And our goal is to try to make the kosher process understandable and easy for our customers. To certify something as being kosher, what does that really mean? Well, the first thing we look at is the different ingredients and the raw material that the product is made out of. Once we know that all the properties of the product and the method of manufacturing this product are all done in a kosher fashion, then we can go and certify, which basically means to attest that this product adheres to the kosher law. From your perspective, explain to me just who is looking for kosher products today? Well, there's a tremendous market out there for, of people who are looking for certified food that is certified as kosher. 
I understand that there's close to 11 million consumers looking at the kosher product. Rabbi, describe the different foods and food groups for me and how you determine whether one is kosher or not. Well, in order for meat to be kosher, it has to, the animal has to chew its cud and have split hoofs. These are dietary laws that go way back to the time of Moses. Kosher meat, once the animal has split hoofs and chews its cud, has to be slaughtered by a specialist called a shochet. And there's a very detailed process to, at the way the animal is killed, and the way the blood is taken out of the animal, it has to be salted, soaked. As well, there are many parts of the animal which we do not eat. Every fish that has fins and scales would be deemed as a kosher fish. Fruits, vegetables, grains, they are all, all kosher. Am I right in assuming that you train rabbis here to certify companies as producing kosher products? Well, what we do here is we evaluate the different elements, the properties of the products to determine and to deem them if they are kosher or not. And then as well, we train our rabbis. We have close to 300 rabbis that are situated throughout the world who continue to monitor these different facilities to make sure that the food that they're producing there is kosher. So we have seminars and newsletters and constantly in contact with them to keep them up to date and to keep them educated on the latest advances in kosher and food technology. So what products are they? And just how do you certify them? It's not just the ingredients that are in the product that deem something kosher. We have to look at the production aids, for instance, release agents. We have to see what equipment are they using to produce these products. A dairy product cannot be mixed with a meat product. So there has to be complete separation throughout production of these two, these two elements. So this is something that has to be looked at quite uh, in depth to see how it's made. How much has technology affected the impact that this organization has? Well, certifying all these companies, we certify thousands and thousands of ingredients. I feel comfortable to say that 98% of any kosher product in the market today has ingredients which is certified kosher by the OK Kosher certification. In order to keep track of so many ingredients and so many elements and where they're made and how they're manufactured, the only way that it's possible to do it today is through the latest technology in computers, through the internet. We take every technology which is available and try to apply it here to help us out in the search and in our ultimate goal to have a clear understanding of the kosher market. The OK Kosher certification has given the consumer a level of confidence that is unprecedented in that a consumer knows that when they go to the supermarket shelf, whatever they're buying as kosher is kosher. This is a far cry from the days many, many years ago when uh, consumers themselves had to read ingredients and weren't so sure about what, what was in the package, whether it was actually kosher. The OK Kosher certification has also made available, made accessible many products that kosher consumers never dreamt of. It has single-handedly opened up many new venues for dining uh, that co kosher consumers can benefit from. It is a multifaceted organization that has played an enormous role in the success of the kosher food industry in the United States. One of OK Kosher Certification's more interesting stories involves Philippe Muller, the COO. He recently joined the organization after a 40-year career at IBM. We talked with him about his decision to join OK Kosher. Uh, we get a lot of uh, queries by people who would like to enter the kosher field and want to know whether we have or there are sources for certain products which are currently using which are not kosher. We are able to respond to them almost instantaneously and tell them what there is, where it is and essentially enable them to expand their marketplace by reaching into the kosher world. And that's all because of technology, huh? It is a combination of the technology which enables us to handle literally hundreds of thousands of ingredients and products and obviously the quality of the staff. And describe for me how you see your role here. I view my role as enabling us to take advantage of technology as it evolves and as it uh, grows. We have representatives in over 60 countries, uh, some 300 people traveling worldwide. There's a need to be able to reach them or them to reach us with information. Snapple Beverage Corporation has a long-standing relationship with OK Kosher. 
start, stems from the early 1980s when the carbonated sodas were made as kosher and continued on into the late 1980s when our ready-to-drink teas and juice drinks that Snapple's so famous for were made as kosher. At that time, these hot fill products or pasteurized products represented more of a challenge from a kosher standpoint, but the rabbis inspected the ingredients, they observed the production process, and inspected all of the plants and confirmed that many of these products could be made as kosher. The founders of Snapple felt that this added value to the brand, so our goal is to have every product that can be made kosher is made kosher under Circle K. We think that Circle K represents a highly respected organization, and certainly uh, it adds value to the brand to have that symbol on our products. You know, it's interesting. I've been looking at some of the material here. You refer to your rabbis, your trained rabbis, as the kosher detectives. Yeah, a lot of people d refer to us as detectives, and the reason for that would be is because we really investigate in great depth the different products and sometimes a product that is used to, sometimes an ingredient which is used to make a product can contain many different ingredients. So here we're looking into the second generation of these ingredients, and sometimes it goes further and further. So in a way we are like detectives because we're really looking at the source, where did all these products come from? How far is your reach? To Australia, to Malaysia, Europe, uh, South Africa, South America, Canada, in 61 countries, and everywhere in the United States. It is a fact you are trusted by some of the biggest food producing organizations in the world. We certify companies like Kraft, uh, Maxwell House, Snapple, Conagra. These are uh, companies that symbolize America. These are companies that symbolize the growth in food technology. These are companies that put their trust in the OK to certify their product as kosher because they know that ultimately the consumer knows that this is the logo that they will trust. Is it a hard, lengthy process to certify a, a product as being kosher? Not really. Not really. It's a lot easier than people think it is. Today, it's much easier than it was even 10 years ago because there's so much choice. 10 years ago, there weren't that many kosher products on the market. But today, there's kosher products of every sort in the market. And if this product is no good, we can always find a substitute, something to stay in its place, a kosher version. And once a company does get that kosher certification, do they maintain it fairly easily or do you have to keep constantly checking on them? Well, our job here is to try to get the certification easy. Once the certification has gotten, to set them up with a system that they can live with. If kosher is an everyday hassle, it'll never work. So what we do here is, after doing the initial setup of kosher, we will try to figure out the best and easiest way for this company to maintain their kosher status. And then there's constant follow-up, there are unannounced visits constantly, and we try our very best to be on a personal level, to get to know every company, to know who the people are, to know how they manufacture their products, not only our rabbis in the field, but every company is visited from our executive rabbis here at the office to help with that personal connection, which opens up the lines of communication and ultimately gives us a better result. Okay, Kosher's efforts to become a state-of-the-art computerized facility is having a major impact on Kosher certification, and it is, in fact, making it an almost totally paperless process, which in turn is saving major food producers literally hundreds if not thousands of hours every year. And in the process, further enhancing this organization's reputation as second to none throughout the world. I'm Doug Llewellyn reporting from New York. Thank you for joining us on this special edition of Close Up on America's Business.